Ever picked up a penny and wondered how much drama went into making that single cent? Spoiler alert, a lot. Behind every coin in your pocket lies a story of molten metal, billion dollar machines, secret security features, and an assembly line so precise it could probably mint your morning coffee if you ask nicely. So today, we're going straight to the heart of American money. Not the flashy paper bills, but the coins. The humble, jingling, sometimes forgotten heroes that keep vending machines alive and laundry days possible. Welcome to the United States Mint, the oldest federal mint in the country, and honestly, one of the most fascinating factories on earth. The metal behind the money. Before we even get to stamping eagles and presidents on metal, let's talk ingredients. Because coins are basically America's metallic recipe for trust. Take the penny for example. Most people still think it's pure copper. Nope. It's actually 97.5% zinc coated with a whisper-thin layer of copper. Yep, just plated. Kind of like how fast food photos look premium, but reality is less coppery. Nickels, quarters, and dimes are made from a blend of copper and nickel, literally called copronical. It's strong, corrosion-resistant, and gives that shiny silver look without being too expensive. Now, here's the fun part. The mint doesn't mine its own metals. It buys giant coils of metal from suppliers. Picture this, steel-colored toilet paper rolls, except each one weighs nearly 9,000 pounds. These heavy-duty coils arrive at the mint in truckloads, ready to be sliced and punched into perfect coin blanks. Like metal discs that are, at this stage, totally naked. No presidents, no words, just raw potential. And those giant coils? They don't all end up in the same place. Once the metal coils roll in, they're distributed across the four main U.S. Mint facilities – Philadelphia, Denver, San Francisco, and West Point – each one playing a distinct role in America's money-making machine. Philadelphia is the creative hub, designing the master dies and producing the majority of circulating coins. Denver takes on mass production too proudly stamping that tiny D you'll spot on many quarters and pennies. San Francisco focuses on collectible proof coins, the shiny mirror finish ones collectors drool over, and West Point, originally a bullion depository, mints the nation's gold and silver coins, basically the Fort Knox of coin production. Between them, they pump out billions of coins every year. In 2023 alone, the U.S. Mint produced more than 11 billion coins. 11 billion! That's enough metal to build a small fleet of space shuttles, or at least pay for a lot of parking meters. The blanking process from coil to coin. Now here's where things get factory cool. Those giant metal coils are unwound and fed into high-speed blanking presses. Imagine a metallic cookie cutter on steroids. Each press slices out perfectly round disks at lightning speed. Thunk, thunk, thunk. Up to 10,000 blanks per minute. It's rhythmic, loud, and oddly mesmerizing. A rain of tiny, shining circles that will soon become U.S. coins. But before they can carry a president's face or a famous monument, these blanks need some serious prepping. They might look like coins, but right now they're just flat metal pancakes. Hard, dull, and stubborn. So the next stop is the furnace. Inside enormous rotating ovens, thousands of blanks tumble together in a fiery glow. The heat? around 1,600 degrees Fahrenheit, or 870 degrees Celsius, hot enough to soften the metal without melting it. This process is called annealing, and it's basically metal's version of a spa treatment. The goal is to make the disc soft and malleable, because stamping an image onto cold, rigid metal would be like trying to print your face on a brick. Once they've had their fiery message, the blanks are transferred to a washing line. <laughs> yep, coins get washed before they're born. They tumble through chemical baths that remove any oxidation, grease, or furnace residue. The smell of heated metal gives way to something surprisingly clean, like a mix between fresh laundry and a science lab. Then comes the drying, and it's not delicate. Imagine giant spinning metal dryers that sound like a laundromat run by robots. The blanks clatter, tumble, and emerge gleaming bright, smooth, and ready for transformation. The upside-down pancake moment. Next comes one of the most oddly satisfying moments in all of manufacturing, upsetting and striking. Upsetting is not emotional trauma, though the machines might disagree. In this stage, each blank passes through a machine that squeezes its edges slightly upward, forming a raised rim. That tiny border might seem decorative, but it's functional. It protects the coin's design from wear and keeps it from stacking awkwardly in machines and wallets. Basically, it's like giving your coin a tiny helmet. And then comes the main event, striking. 
the moment when a plain disc officially becomes money. The blank is fed into a coining press that slams it with up to 100 tons of pressure per square inch. That's strong enough to flatten a car, but instead it leaves behind a perfect crisp image of George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, or whichever American hero got the call that year. Each coin gets its design from a die, an engraved steel stamp that transfers the image onto the blank. The master die is created at the Philadelphia Mint using computer engraving and laser technology so precise it can etch microscopic details, like Lincoln's bow tie. Now imagine this happening 750 times per minute. Yep, that's how fast modern coin presses can go. It's hypnotic, loud, and incredibly efficient. Now, by this point, you might think a coin's just a piece of metal with a face and a value stamped on it. But hold on, there's way more going on under that shine. Tiny details, huge security. Here's something most people don't realize. US coins have security features just like paper money. Yep, even your spare change has built-in defenses against forgery. Take the edge of the dime or quarter, for example. Those tiny grooves called reading weren't just added for decoration. Back in the day, when coins were made of real silver and gold, sneaky folks would shave off tiny bits of metal from the edges and melt them down for profit. The grooves made it obvious when someone tried that stunt. Today, the metal's not precious anymore, but the tradition stuck. A little historical armor that still gives your coins its grip. And it doesn't stop there. The details, from George Washington's wrinkles to Lincoln's bow tie, are ridiculously precise for a reason. Every ridge, letter, and microtexture helps verify authenticity. Each die design is scanned, etched, and checked using high-resolution imaging to make sure nothing looks off. Because in the world of minting, even a tiny slip can turn U.S. legal tender into U.S. oops, that's a $200 collector's error coin. But precision isn't just about design, it's about scale. Billions of blanks, zero room for error. You'd think making 11 billion coins a year leaves some room for oops, but nope, the mint's margin for error is tighter than a jar of pickles that's been cross-trained in martial arts. Every single batch of coins is weighed, measured, and visually inspected by automated cameras that could probably spot a fingerprint on the moon. These machines scan for even the tiniest imperfections, off-center strikes, uneven edges, or even weird color tones. And if something looks suspicious, the coin gets the instant boot. We're talking conveyor belt justice here. Coins that don't make the cut don't go to coin heaven, though. They're dumped into massive bins, remelted and sent back into the system. It's basically a do-over, metal reincarnation. The rejects are shredded, melted into ingots, and rolled back into those huge metal coils you saw earlier. Nothing goes to waste. And speaking of recycling, the mint's surprisingly eco-conscious for a place that literally burns through tons of metal every day. All the scrap metal punched out during blanking is collected, sorted by alloy type, and sent right back into the smelter. In 2022 alone, this closed-loop recycling saved millions of pounds of metal from ending up as waste. Even the rinse water from the washing and annealing stages gets filtered and reused, which is wild when you remember this is a place built to make money, not save it. Every stage of this process is a dance between speed and precision, high-tech automation keeping every cent literally within a hair's width of perfection. And once the circulating coins are squared away, the mint shifts gears to a much slower, more dramatic kind of production, the fancy stuff. Collector coins and the proof process. If you've ever seen a proof coin, you know it doesn't just look different. It looks like money's glow up moment. Every detail is sharper, the fields are mirror smooth, and the whole thing practically screams, handle me with gloves, literally, because they do. Proof coins start with planchets that get VIP treatment from the very beginning. Before they're even touched, the blanks are polished until they shine like tiny mirrors. Then they're individually cleaned and carefully inspected under bright lights by technicians wearing gloves and white lab coats. The kind of precision you'd expect in a microchip factory, not a mint. The dyes used to strike them also get special treatment. They're polished and treated to give a frosted texture to raise designs in a glossy, reflective background. It's that contrast that makes Washington's face look like he's lit by studio lights. Each die can only be used a few hundred times before it's retired. Quality over quantity. Then comes the striking itself. Unlike regular coins that are banged out at lightning speed, proof coins are struck slowly, usually twice or even thrice, under massive pressure. Each strike forces the metal to flow into the tiniest details of the die. The folds of clothing, the sharp edges of lettering, 
even the texture of hair. When the press opens, the coin looks so crisp it can practically wink at you. But the glamour doesn't stop there. Every proof coin is manually removed from the press, no conveyor belts here, individually inspected again and placed in protective capsules to avoid scratches or fingerprints. It's an almost surgical process if surgeons worked with silver and gold instead of scalpels. The result? Coins that aren't meant to jingle in pockets, but to sit proudly in display cases or vaults. Some collectors call them coins too pretty to spend, and they're not wrong. These proofs can range from simple silver dollars to high-end gold eagles worth hundreds or even thousands of dollars each. And while circulating coins might be minted by the millions every day, proof coins are produced in carefully limited quantities, often just a few thousand per design. That's what gives them their exclusivity and collector's value. In fact, proof coins have become one of the US Mint's biggest money makers, not for circulation, but for the collector market. It's the art gallery of coin manufacturing hidden behind industrial doors. But here's the fun twist. Whether it's a million dollar collector's coin or the quarter you use for laundry, every piece of US currency has one thing in common. It's built to last. Because once these coins leave the mint, their real journey begins. The journey beyond the mint. Once coins are minted, they don't just roll out the door like, good luck out there. They're counted, bagged, and shipped off to Federal Reserve banks across the country. Basically, the coin world's logistics hub from there, they make their way to commercial banks, vending machine companies, and armored trucks that keep America's pocket change moving. That's when the coins start their long adventure. Through cash registers, soda fountains, parking meters, laundry mats, arcade machines, and the mysterious depths of couch cushions. A single coin can circulate for 30 years before it's too worn to use, traveling farther than most of us will on vacation. And when it finally does retire, it's collected, melted down, and reborn back into new blanks ready to re-enter the economy. It's the circle of coin life, from raw metal to currency, from currency back to raw metal. It's a cycle so efficient it's almost poetic, a constant loop of creation, circulation, and renewal. The same copper or nickel atoms might have been part of a coin your grandparents used in the 1970s, now living on in your pocket change today. But here's where things get even more fascinating. For all the mint's high-tech precision and recycling brilliance, there's one part of the process that's still wildly ironic. Because while the mint is great at making money, sometimes it literally costs more money to make money. Here's a coin fact that'll mess with your head. It actually costs more to make a penny than the penny is worth. In 2023, it cost the US Mint 2.7 cents to make one penny. Yep, every time you find one on the sidewalk, the government technically lost money. Nickels, even worse. Each one costs around 10 cents to produce. So yes, America's been minting coins at a loss for years, mostly out of tradition and convenience. And yet, there's still debate about killing the penny. Some argue it's a waste of taxpayer money. Others say it's part of national identity. After all, how else would kids test if a battery works or make wishes in fountains? The penny might be tiny, but it's woven into the fabric of everyday life. But that's the strange paradox of coinage. For all the science and engineering behind it, money is still emotional. Every coin tells a story, not just of metal and machinery, but of moments and meaning. If you've made it this far, you already know that minting coins is less like cranking out widgets and more like running a high-stakes cooking show. A dash of chemistry, a lot of heat, and a touch of artistry that turns raw metal into something symbolically priceless. And that symbolism? It runs deep. Because when you hold an American coin, you're literally holding history a miniature time capsule of design, politics, and national identity. So let's rewind the clock to where it all began. The coin that started it all. America's first official coins were minted in 1793. Not in a gleaming factory, but in a basement in Philadelphia. No fancy machines, no lasers, not even electricity. Just a guy with a hammer striking designs onto copper discs by hand. That's how the first chain scent was born. A coin so primitive, it looked like something you'd find in a pirate's chest. But even then, the idea was the same. Coins equal trust, a standardized, reliable form of value that didn't depend on personal promises or sketchy IOUs. As the young US grew, so did its minting operations. By the 1800s, steam-powered presses took over, cranking out coins faster than ever. Gold and silver coins circulated freely until the Great Depression hit and people started hoarding precious metals. That's when the US stopped making coins with real silver and gold for circulation. 
1965, the mint switched to cheaper alloys. But let's face it, when your quarter contains more silver than it's worth, people stop spending it. Once the mint moved past precious metals, the focus shifted to something just as valuable, identity. Take a look at your change. It's practically a pocket-sized history lesson. Lincoln's face appeared on the penny in 1909. Washington's on the quarter in 1932. Jefferson on the nickel in 1938. Roosevelt on the dime in 1946, and Kennedy on the half dollar after his death in 1964. Each face marks a chapter in America's history, a mix of leadership, loss, and legacy. Even the words on those coins speak volumes. E pluribus unum, Latin for out of many, one, has been there since 1795, symbolizing unity. In God We Trust first appeared during the Civil War, a nation divided but holding on to faith. Over time, coins evolved into more than currency. They became cultural snapshots. From the 50 state quarters that turned loose change into collectibles, to the short-lived Sacagawea dollar meant to honor Native American heritage, every coin carries a little piece of America in its shine. Of course, not all coins are meant for pocket change. Some are pure investment, literal treasure stamped by the U.S. Mint. At the West Point Mint, gold and silver bullion coins are struck with microscopic precision. Each one is 99.99% pure, mirror polished, and sealed tighter than Fort Knox itself. The American Eagle series, for example, is world famous, part artwork, part financial insurance policy. During the 2008 financial crisis, demand for these soared as people traded paper cash for cold hard certainty. But even in a world obsessed with perfection, mistakes happen and that's where things get fun. A tiny double strike, a misprint, or an extra leaf on a quarter can turn spare change into a collector's jackpot. Ever heard of the 1955 double die penny? It's a famous misprint where the words liberty and in God we trust appear doubled, thanks to a die misalignment, one sold for over $24,000, proof that even imperfection has its price. So yes, technically your pocket change could be hiding a small fortune. You just have to stare at your coins long enough to look suspicious in public. In the end, every coin, perfect or flawed, tells a story. Some just happen to be worth a little or a lot more than others. For centuries, these little discs have been symbols of trust, trade, and tangible value. They've outlived wars, recessions, and redesigns, but now they're facing their biggest competitor yet, invisibility. Because as it turns out, the future of money might not jingle at all. The Rise of Digital Payments and the Future of Coins Let's be honest, most people don't carry cash anymore, let alone coins. Between Apple Pay, Venmo, and tap cards, the jingle in our pockets is getting quieter. In fact, coin usage has dropped by over 30% in the past decade. During the pandemic, there was even a nationwide coin shortage, not because the mint stopped making them, but because they just weren't circulating. People were hoarding coins in jars, drawers, and couch cushions, creating what the Federal Reserve literally called a temporary coin circulation disruption. Yes, that's economist speak for everyone forgot about their change. But don't count coins out just yet. Despite the decline, coins remain vital for millions of Americans, especially small businesses, laundromats, tolls, and rural communities where digital access isn't guaranteed. And beyond function, there's something emotional about coins. They carry memories, your first allowance, a lucky penny, the quarter you kept from a road trip. Digital money can't quite replicate that tactile connection to value. Here's something wild to leave with you. All the coins currently in circulation weigh more than 1.6 million tons combined. That's roughly the weight of 9,000 blue whales. And if you stacked every US coin ever made on top of each other, they'd reach the moon and back twice. Also, every year, Americans collectively lose an estimated $62 million in coins, down drains, in sofas, and yes, in fountains. So somewhere out there, there's a very rich wishing well. If you enjoyed this dive into how America literally makes its money, hit that like button. It's free, unlike minting a penny. Drop a comment with the rarest or weirdest coin you've ever found, and tell us if you think the penny should be finally retired. And of course, subscribe for more deep dives into the machines, metals, and mysteries behind everyday things we take for granted. Because sometimes, the smallest things tell the biggest stories.